Hello, welcome to the Big Scuba Show. Hello and welcome back to the Big Scoob Podcast. My name is Ian. I will be your dive master for this episode. With me, uh, as always, is my co-host. Hello, my name's Gemma. Welcome to the Big Scoob Podcast. This episode is sponsored by Narked at 90. They are beyond technical and you'll find them at narkedat90.com. Go yep. there for all your diving and particularly technical diving requirements yes and they're currently um bringing out a association with ratio computers so if you're looking for a dive computer head over to knocked at 90 and check out the ratio dive computers if you're wondering what this podcast is all about uh we talk to uh divers we talk to explorers we talk to underwater photographers talk to anyone really who particularly likes diving maybe paddleboarding free dive they've got some kind of connection and in this instance in this episode we are talking to a very well known company called real diving and uh, we talked to jamie parker who's their uh, sales manager and uh, we are talking about Santi suits, Santi joy suits. That's right. In the previous episode, we went, we interviewed Jamie, and he told us all about what it means to be a Santi dealer. So the process about them educating a dive shop, say, about dry suits, and the process of talking to a customer when they are looking for a new dry suit. Now the sound is different on this one because we are recording on location at the Go Diving show this year, which was just earlier in March. So uh, we spent a little bit of time with Jamie going through the whole sizing up uh, process, yeah. well, from start to finish, on what it's like uh, to go through the process, get measured up and everything that's involved in that. Now for time constraints, obviously we can't put a three hour podcast together. So what we're gonna do is there'll be uh, bits and pieces that Snippets. we take from, take from that morning and then if you want to know more you can either go on to YouTube and you can download the whole thing or you can contact the uh, Santi for you know or your local uh, Santi dealer um, for further information yeah and we also need to say thank you to Crystal Seas um, we actually then went there after the go diving show in the week and got measured for our boots and hoods as well and looked at the gloves so and that finished off the process which is really cool was that because mm. we you know uh we went to our local d dealer which we you know we recommend you do as well and uh, polly took quite a bit of time with and chris to yep. uh, go through that with us so uh, wish you you'll hear a bit later on in this yeah. episode yep so uh Obviously, yes, we said about the noise and uh, there'll be a bit of background noise, but the process uh, Jamie takes us through from start to finish and then we finish hey, it was Christmas. a busy show. It was, it was good. Yeah, so, so let's do it. Yep, so here we are at the Go Diving Show on the Santee Stand. Hello, good morning. This is Gemma and Ian from the Big Scuba Podcast. We're here on the Real Diving Stand at the Go Diving Show. And we're here with Jamie Parker, sales manager at Real Diving. And today we're going to show you the process of being measured up for a Santi dry suit with Jamie. So thanks Super. for joining us. Excellent. Thank no you very much. Thanks for joining us. Great. Uh, yeah, and I think uh, we'll try and take you through the whole experience that somebody should have when they're getting fitted for a Santi suit from any of our dealers around the UK. Right, okay. So the first thing that we do before we talk about any suits or any measuring is we talk to you. We talk to the divers about, so I'm going to do exactly the same things with you. So, it's important for us to understand the types of the configuration you dive in, the types of diving that you do, maybe the suits that you've already had, what you do like about them, what you don't like about mm -hmm. them. So we'll start there. So, what uh, what configuration do you dive in? Single tank. Single tank. Single tank. Yep. Okay, and you in? Uh, single tank, sometimes twins. Okay. Mainly single. Okay. And do you have any, do you experience any difficulties, particularly you're in with uh, any of your uh, movements involved in twins? Yeah, like so I struggle okay. with doing shutdowns. Okay. Um, it, as much as I can get the tank forward uh, to do a, to um, hit the man to get the manifold, mm -hmm. um, that's what I struggle with. I, I think a lot of divers struggle. Yeah, yeah with for that, sure. It's, it's uh, quite an awkward. Uh, short arms and going to the gym don't do anything for, <laughs> Too for much flexibility. Crossing. Excellent. And uh, Gemma, do you uh, 
In single tank, it's normally pretty okay, but is there anything you can think of specifically um, movement wise? Arms have, seem to have quite long arms, so the movement over the shoulders seems quite tight okay. in the suits I've had previously. Uh, okay, perfect. And um, do you have any injuries, any ongoing injuries, any mobility injuries, any knee issues, arm issues, shoulder issues? No. No? No. no. Okay, both pretty fit and healthy. Yeah. Good, good. Yeah. Um, so what about the type of diving that you do? Are you doing mostly shore diving, mostly boat diving, wreck diving? Just give me a bit of an idea about what your diving looks like. So all recreational diving, yeah. inland lake diving, we yeah. do boat diving, jumping off the boat, and we have done some shore diving as well. Okay, so, so a good mix. Yeah. Uh, any teaching? No. No? And what about you, Ian? Um, so recreational diving, um, and then I, I, I work as a dive master for Crystal Seas and Norwich. Okay, so a little bit of a teaching involved as well. Yeah. And now, here's the question where you have to be honest with me. Go on then. Okay? Go, go. You have to be very honest now. <laughs> There's two types of divers. There's the type of diver that gets changed on a changing mat, folds their suit up nicely, right. puts it in a box, takes it home, rinses it, hangs it up. And there's another type of diver that gets out of it as quick as they can because their sausage sandwich is ready and slings it in the back of their van and deals with it later. Which type of diver are you? A or B? A. Very good. I'm A, always been A. Excellent, good. Yeah. It's good to know because you can't, people have a way of diving, they have a personality, they have a, a and, and it's good to, you have to take that in. You yeah. can't give people a product or a garment or, or a piece of equipment that has to be looked after. If they know fundamentally deep down inside, they're yeah. not going to do it. Well, so uh, and also you rely on having good equipment and um, you need to look after it so absolutely. that looks after you absolutely. and you know our suits are so important absolutely. isn't it you know when you dive yeah and that applies to freshwater diving or salt diving that absolutely. we need to yeah absolutely. yeah and uh, the second thing is we don't need to talk about brands specifically but the suits that you've had in the past or you have now is there anything that you don't like about your suit or could be improved or do you think there's uh, is everything great or what do you like and what you don't like about what you're diving in um, experience at the moment so uh, when I first bought my suit yep. it was a, a thin really thin uh, crushed neoprene neoprene suit yep. and uh, and that has served me well uh, must have done nearly 10 years um but I find it does wear in certain places. Okay. Uh, I, I, I use a BCD yeah. um, and sometimes a weight harness, and I find that over the, the course of diving, I've done about nearly 400 dives, and, and it has started to wear in places, you know, as things do. Um, on the whole, that's been fine. The thing I've added, which I've, which I've found really useful, mm -hmm. is having a pocket each side. Um, on the leg? On, on the, the legs. On the yeah. side of the leg or on the front? Um, more on the sort on the, of side, on the side really. like you see on the, the, the suit yeah, 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 like those. Yeah, I like I like having a zip a zippable pockets. Yep, yep. I can put yep. my torch or a reel or something in. Yep. Um, and also, <laughs> I like having a P zip because yes. when I'm dark, especially winter time and what have you, and uh, if I'm I am instru uh, instructor and such, um, you know, you don't get much time to you know de kit and then you've got a nip to loo. I haven't no. Okay, this could be an interesting concept and discussion for later on. Okay, all right. <laughs> um, but having minutes. that convenience, yeah, for sure. um, and I learned, I didn't have that at first, mm -hmm. and it wasn't until working with other instructors and, you know, seeing their, yeah. what they needed to do, yeah. and, you know, you literally get five, ten minutes sometimes, you know, yeah. and there isn't enough time, you know, to de-kit, go the loop, come back, get back on, you know, um, is a p-zip or something like that mm. saves a lot of time and hassle so have you got any uh, mobility issues that you think are to do with the fit of the suit not really no oh, no Gemma? yeah so i've had two dry suits first one didn't have pockets so i missed pockets yeah. um and then the second suit i have got two pockets which are really useful yeah and it has got a cuff dump as well which has been a revelation so as you well. like a cuff dump yes okay. yeah. Cool. Yeah. oh i just thought of something actually so um when i've first tried my suit on i've only ever had one one dry suit i tried a back zip yeah and i also tried a front zip yeah and i like the, the flexibility of having a front opening zip yeah 
um, and you, it felt a lot more freer mm -hmm. because having that great big metal zip. So at the moment you've got a rear zip. About I have, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I went with that purely, on one, because even though with a front zip, on you still have to be like some kind of contortionist to get yourself in and you know i'm a bloke and uh, not particularly that thin and you're like trying to get in and it's, and i thought well i'll compromise i'll go for the back sit because i'm always going to have a buddy i I'm, you know i always dive with somebody you know whether it's jem or somebody else so i'll, I'll just ask them to zip me in mm. so um, but yeah, they were, it's certainly more flexible having the front zip. Well, I, I think I mean it's 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 subjective, right? And yeah. It, oh, it definitely. Depends. Yeah, yeah. And we've, For me. we've sounded in all of the stuff that you've said. You said you wanted a cuff dump. You said you wanted a P zip. You, you, you potentially moving the zip at the front or the zip at the back. In a standard suit, we've sounded all of those things are are, are choosable. Oh, wow. mm -hmm. You can decide whether you want your front zip left to right, right to left on your back. Whether you so I could have a cuff dump as well. Yeah, you can Brilliant. have a cuff dump. There's no issue with that. Yeah. And a P zip or a P valve yeah. might get you into the P valve. Oh, okay. So that might not be for camera to describe right. how it works. Yeah. <laughs> okay. But good. saying that, it, you know, it's a necessary thing for everybody. Isn't I think it? a P. I think a P zip. They're, they're two real different things. One of yeah. them is if you're if you're teaching at Stony Cove and you're or you're diving at Stony in the winter and you don't want to get out of your suit and you want no. to have a wee, then a P a P zip is probably a useful thing. That's if you're right. doing dives and you're having an issue with needing to go to the toilet when you dive. Underwater. Some, yeah, yeah, underwater. Then a P-valve is, uh, is a great way to do it. Right, okay. I can warn you, the, the, there's, there's two things you need to think about the P-valve though. Yeah. Number one, it's very difficult to do the first time. Right. You have to fully commit and drink three litres of water and go for a dive. So you don't have a <laughs> <laughs> But once, you, once you've done it, <laughs> once you've ripped off Are we talking the from experience here? Yeah, definitely. Okay. The, the, the second thing you need to remember is once you start with a P-valve and get used to it, you have to use it every time. Because it becomes second nature down there to do it. And if you're not plumbed in, as we call it. Right, okay. <laughs> <laughs> right, so the reason we do the interview is because Santi is not just one suit. It's a range of suits. And to be perfectly honest, uh, yes, of course there's a price range. Starting from around 2000 up to two and a half thousand, two thousand six hundred. Yeah. So yeah, there's a price point. Um, however, there are also characteristics of the suits throughout the range that could fit. So mm. the right suit for you, irrelevant of price, may actually be one of the more entry level suits. Yeah. They tend to be a little bit less fitted, the e-space, um, for example, but it's much more uh, resilient, so the material is much more resilient. Mm. So if you're doing a lot of, if you're on the south coast and you're doing a lot of wreck diving and you like you know, digging around with your crowbar under your arm when you're diving then probably one of the lighter more flexible suits yeah. would not be a good choice for you maybe it's better for you to go for something that's a bit more sturdy yeah. Yeah. so the point of the interview is to understand you also as a now when i'm advising you on suits which i'm going to do in a minute after we've measured then it's coming from a base of knowledge yeah mm -hmm. you know it, it's I, I want to know who you are before i can tell you what suit is right for yeah. you People underestimate the value of a suit. Yeah. A suit, yes, it's not a life-preserving thing like a regulator. However, when you're talking about comfort, this is a hobby. Yeah. This is a pastime. Yeah, and you want to be happy. You're spending a lot of money doing on it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, doing the doing the thing that you love to do. So, getting the suit right and particularly the undersuit right. Yeah. Is really important, and it yeah. changes people's diving. Yeah. They've enjoyed diving before and then they get the right suit fitted by the right person. Yeah. Now suddenly it's a whole new level. You're so right. And last weekend um, I was diving at, at Stony doing some uh, deep water training for me. Um, and I was 30 meters and my buddy, warm as toast, I was frozen. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I wanted to get back before he did because I was, I was cold in my suit. Definitely. It's also it's also a benefit of a membrane suit compared to a neoprene suit. Yeah. In a neoprene suit, you can be in a membrane suit, I should say. You are a lot more flexible when it comes to your thermal protection. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So in the past, obviously, we've had a, a summer a summer undersuit and a winter undersuit. Well, that's great because the summer undersuit is perfect for two months of the year, and the winter undersuit is perfect for two months of the year. Yeah. Dean, Oh, you found it. 
Oh, I have to cut that. Sorry. Yeah. Morning, sir. Morning. Uh, it's good to point. Just cut. Can you come on this side and stop people from walking through? Can you do some security? Don't worry, you're not going to be on. Um. It's a comfort of the seat we're talking about, right? Yeah. yeah. So, the, the, I mean, yeah, it's a good point. And the thing is, with a membrane suit, you get more versatility when it comes to your thermal protection because you can change around. Yeah. It used to, we used to have a summer suit and a winter suit. The problem with that is, the summer suit is perfect for two months of the year. Yeah. The winter suit is perfect for two months of the year. Yeah. But for the rest of the time, you're either a little bit too hot or a little bit too cold. Yeah. With a membrane suit, we can layer different base layers, the heating products, you maybe even pulling a vest into it. So you can actually decide your thermal protection as the season progresses. That's okay. really so good. So you actually yeah. stay in a, in a, in a your most comfortable way of diving. Yeah. The most comfortable thermal protection. Shall we? So right now, the next step is to get on with some measuring. Yep. Yeah. Okay. So okay. you ready for this? We'll move yep. the yep. tables out of yep. the way. Okay. And the chairs. Move this over here. Who wants to go first? I promise I've got warm hands. So the important part for measuring is to remember we're measuring the body. Yeah. But you don't wear your trainers when you go diving. So we get rid of them to start with. Um, and it's really important that as you are, we're wearing clothes that are as tight fitting as possible mm -hmm. so that we can actually see the body, see where the measurements are and also get an accurate. Because once these measurements are done, Santi will take into consideration when the suit is fitted that it should be able to be dived in a BZ400 which is the, the warmest suit we have, the thickest on the suit. So we don't need to think about, oh, we want it a bit baggy, or want it a bit... What we're doing right now is measuring the body. So some kind of tolerance. Absolutely. And there's been, a, there's been a few questions that I've asked you, which I will refer back to now when I'm doing the measuring, particularly with you. Okay. But, so... We'll start at the start. I've got warm hands. <laughs> That's all right. Perfect. You have a neoprene neck seal yes. or a, a neoprene. Yeah. So now we're going to take the body trunk measurement, which is from here, the top of your breastbone. So I'll find the top for you there. And if you could just put your finger there on the tape at the top. There. That's it, perfect. And this is more pronounced normally on ladies than it is on men, but it's really important that we're measuring the whole back. Because obviously when Gemma bends forward, this is all taken into consideration. So you have to measure the space here. So is that like the hollow of the back? Yeah. 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 Now we're going to take the bicep measurement. We like to measure this in a couple of positions. We can measure it flat here. Uh, in a relaxed state around the widest point. But I'd also like you to do is, you're not done this yet, but when you do a shutdown, you need to reach for the isolator valve here. Yep. So if you could do that for me. Because if you move on to... So there's a three centimeter difference in your arm. And if you imagine, it will become more pronounced now when we measure it in afterwards. Yeah. But even I knew you're quite well trained. So if we measure it only down here, if you move on to technical diving later and you need to perform this movement, mm. if we're missing three or four centimetres, well, it? It? it will probably be around about five or six centimetres. If you're missing that in the measurement of the suit, it will make this movement even yeah. more yeah. difficult. And it's actually the same with the forearm as well. So if we measure your forearm with the same measure the right way around, it would be good. Okay, and then just do your shutdown again. Yeah. Open up your arm a little bit. That's it. That's it. Yeah. So there's a two centimeter difference there. You can measure your wrist on the other side. Just hold it there, down straight. You have got quite long arm. I have. Yeah. But that's uh, that's okay because when we come to fit in the suit, my current suit, I do feel that's like. A th it does go up a little bit over my... Well, we can, yeah, yeah. we can make those adjustments to a standard size. Yeah. So if you turn and face me, we're going to take the chest measurement now, and there's two measurements, fully exhaled and fully inhaled. Yeah. So if you just lift up your arms. Take the thigh measurement now, and the way we do this is we take it five centimetres below the crutch. So if you just stand relaxed. It's not very good for my old knees. It's up and down <laughs> it's all the up time. And down. 
So now we're going to take some measurements of the legs. So what I would like you to do is take the tape measure, by the, hold it by the metal, and hold it up into your crutch, yep. to the, into the top of your leg. Yep. And make sure that that's right, so it stays flat. And then stand up and look up as well, so we can see. Take the first one down to the knee, 34. Uh, can you just turn around? When we're doing the calf measurements, especially uh, if people have had injuries before, so if people have had bad knee injuries, um, you can often find that one calf is favoured and can be slightly bigger. So it's important, again, this is why we like people to be in tight fitting clothing so we can visibly see. We want to measure the biggest calf. So. Okay, so there's three measurements uh, on the ladies that we need to take. Um, that we don't have to take on the guys. And for this, we need our magic tool. <laughs> well, we, these measurements are from the waist. So the reason we use this is because it's easy for us to find the waist area, then we can take the measurements from. One of them is point of rest, and it's really important, uh, especially uh, that all people, especially ladies, uh, that this is discussed that people wear what they wear when they dive mm -hmm. uh, when they're measured for a suit. Yep. So if you wear a sports bra and uh, you, you are a different shape in a sports bra, it's important to measure that yep. because then we can see. That's you done. Right, Wasn't thank you very much. Painful? No, no, not at all. And Take this back. There's lots of people walking around. <laughs> in you feel confident that you've taken the measurements as well. That's, good. yeah, yeah, Excellent. that's really good. Okay, Ian, I'm ready for you, sir. Okay, that's all, right. all done. That's really simple, isn't it? It's a really yeah, quick I mean, it's, process. Uh, if you're talking people through it, it takes a little bit longer, but if you're just measuring. Yeah. So we encourage our dealers as well to, as you've done today, Yeah. we measure by two people, because that's literally, if it, it takes five minutes to measure something. Yeah. If all you're doing is actually just measuring, it takes five minutes. So it's good, we get two people doing it, Yeah. just so we can then compare. So we can get both sizes, Yeah and work out if there's if they're both the same then great if there's one that's different then you measure that one together again yeah yeah make sure we get it right yeah good excellent okay so we can we maybe don't need the chairs we can stand here okay the next thing we do is that all right yeah it's still on i don't know how it's best for the camera with this one but we have um these measuring charts. Okay. So we have these measuring charts that we've got. So these are all of the standard sizes of the suits. Okay. And with a Santi suit, we can take a standard size and we can make up to six alterations of five centimeters, between two and five centimeters. We don't alter for one centimeter because it's it's pointless. Mm. So between five and uh, two and five centimeters, and we can make six alterations. The first four are included in the price of a standard suit. Five and six you pay for, but it's it's like twenty five euros, I think, or something like that. And how many sizes are in the range of the suits that you do? Yeah, so there's sixteen men sizes, oh. and there's. 12 lady sizes. Okay. Actually, there's actually one more lady size as well. So everybody's covered? Pretty much. I mean, historically, I think the dry suit industry, historically there's been a thing about made to measure suits being the better suit. Mm. And I think in, with some companies that used to be the case, because maybe if their suits were made outside of the UK en masse, but if it was a made to measure, it was made in yeah. the UK. So maybe there was some credence to that. Yeah. However, now with the Santi suit, if I'm a, a standard, I am a standard LS. So if you were a made to measure suit, the only difference is in the cutting room at Santi, if it's for my suit, they just click a button that says standard men's LS, yeah. and the machine will cut out the um, patterns okay. for those. And if you're a made to measure suit, they fill in your measurements into the computer, and the machine cuts out your, then you're left with a load of fabric cut into panels, from that point on, there's no difference. 
Yeah, I, I was under the impression that they would take a standard suit, like it's already cut out, and then they'd like no. cut and shape. So that's really good so to know. So you can have so so with with these suits, uh, if it's a, a made to measure suit, then we fill in all of the sizes that all the measurements we've just taken. These are all of the measurements that are needed to make a made to measure suit. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. With a made to fit suit, which is basically where we take a standard size and make adjustments when we're loading it into the panel mm -hmm. and they put in okay a standard large suit with these adjustments yes. and the computer yeah. will work it out the panels will be cut out mm. but from that point on it's exactly the same that's yeah, brilliant well, that's divers come in all shapes and sizes what about <laughs> um, disabled uh, peak divers yeah absolutely we've done a, a number of, of course that takes a little bit of time and a little bit of planning but the guys the guys at Santi are fantastic yeah. I mean we in those cases where there's a specific part of the body or a specific mobility issue, yes, then yeah. what will happen is normally one of our more experienced dealers will be involved then, or even maybe one of us, then to come over and take the measurements. We'll take photos, um, and so we get as much information. So it could take a while, but absolutely, Santi is completely open, and we have many times yeah. made yeah. it for people who have lost limbs or people have a serious mobility issue on one side. Yeah, that's good to know. Yeah, it is. yeah absolutely. Yeah. In fact, I had one guy who, he wanted a zip. We did, ended up doing a, a removable leg. Because when he was at the dive site, he wanted to have his prosthetic leg in. Yeah. yeah. But then when he's diving, he doesn't want his prosthetic leg in because it's too floaty, so then he takes it out and kind of zips up. So there's a... Yeah. That's amazing, yeah. <laughs> Isn't it? Yeah. It, it, it definitely can be done because they, they have the expertise and the machinery to do yeah. it and the, yeah. and the, and the, the knowledge yeah. of the suit. Okay, so what we do, uh, Gemma, in your case, it's very easy for me to stand here. I know exactly what sizes we are before we even, uh, before we <laughs> even go into it because <laughs> I've looked at a lot of people. Uh, however, it's good to go through this process. So we look at the sizes. So first, from a, what height are you? Uh, 170. 170. 170. Bang on 170. Okay. So that's a good indicator of where we're going to roughly start. Mm -hmm. And remember, in some of these measurements, you'll see the bigger measurements, like the height, the chest, the waist. The, there's a bracket. Mm -hmm. So if you're within those, then it's classed as being right. Yeah. Some of the measurements, like for example, the thigh. The circumference of the thigh is the circumference. There's nothing you can do about it. It either fits into the suit or it doesn't. Yeah. And it's similar with the hips to the way as well. There's some key measurements where you have to get that out. Otherwise, it's not going to work. So we know we're going to be somewhere around a MLL or a large, somewhere, yeah. around, somewhere around here. So then we can come down and look at the chest measurements. Yours are 94, 98. So if we're looking at large, and remember, we've got five centimeters we can adjust. So sometimes we could look down and say, okay, an MLL would be where we're at. But as we move further down, maybe at the height or maybe at different measurements, it's easier to go from an L and bring an L back down with adjustments rather than an MLL up with adjustments. But we'll see where we get to. Yeah. Um, we go for the big measurements first because the other measurements are generally just a, a tweak and an adjustment. So we're moving down then to the, uh, to the waist and the hips. So you've got 84 and 100. So when we're moving down 84, so you bang on a large there, and you see here an MLL. Mm -hmm. And you see here an MLL, you would be already, it's, your measurement is too big. Yeah. So, so we know we're somewhere between here. Both could be adjusted. Um, and then we're on to the hips, 100. So again, so here, you're back down to MLL, but we could also adjust the large down. So I think with you, what we would do is start off with a large suit, yeah. look at it, feel how it is, and then we can make some adjustments. Mm -hmm. We're at the show, so we've got suits for you to try on. Some dealers don't have, I mean, to hold Six, uh, 28, 29 different sizes of suits is obviously... It, yeah. it's, it's, That's a hell of a it's, range. It's a hell of a range. Yeah. Um, so there is a way of, if we were making a suit for you without those in, which a lot of our dealers do and do it very well, mm. we would just decide from here where we wanted to Just visually. And, yeah. get, and get the right suit for you. Mm. Um, so we're gonna, I think we're going to start you with an L. And then if we move on to Ian... Here's me. This is you. And move away from the ladies' side into the men's <laughs> tri-suit. 
Okay, so your height, sir? Uh, six foot two. You're not. <laughs> For the camera. <laughs> Question. Five, um, five ten. Five ten. Honest. So you're at like one no, five seventy. Nine, actually. About the same height as me, like one yeah. seventy two, one seventy three. Okay. So. Your major malfunction, sir, will be your uh, your <laughs> chest and your shoulders. Yes. <laughs> you're, you're better that way than that way. Yep. Um, so we know we're going to be around, I know from looking at you, that we're going to be around about uh, an XL range, yeah. just from your top half, your chest and your yeah. shoulders. So we can start looking down here. And we have, and it's a good point to, to, to point out here, you've got small, medium, large, extra large, but then you have SL. Okay. ML, yeah. MLL, that is not medium large, it's medium long. Yeah, I'm short in the leg. And yeah. So um, these are the L's are, are, are long and the S's are short. Yeah. So my suit, I am exactly a large short. Yeah. Like if you measure me to the centimetre, um, a picture boy large short. Um, so large short, XLS is extra large short just so we, we know where we're going with that. So if we look at your chest, you're 123, 126. So chest measurement, really, you should be along here. Yeah. However, remember that we can do some increases in sizes. Yeah. So we can add another five centimeters to this, so we can bring the XLS up to, okay. up to yours. Um, and then moving down, thighs, uh, waist and, thigh, and hips, you're 110, 119. So waist 110, 119, again, XL, maybe even an XXLS. Right. Or an XLS with adjustments. Yeah. So we'll have a look. So you're going to be somewhere between those two suits adjusted. Yeah. Everybody wants to be a medium. We're not there. No, we're not. <laughs> okay, so the next thing, uh, I've got some. Uh, Funnily enough, here's some Somebody I prepared did. earlier. Yeah. Um, we've got some the Kango Wonder Suit for you, which is a, you say, from a thermal protection, our mid, uh, a mid thermal protection layer. Okay. So it's not our winter suit, no. but it's also not the summer suit. This is a suit that you can dive, let's say, 12 degrees plus, 10, 12 degrees plus. So for most people, that's going to be our perfect. Most people, it's going to be perfect. Yeah. The guys that are not diving through the winter months in the completion. This is going to be a perfect yep. suit for them. So, into the changing rooms, get your undersuits on. Yep, so do what, take all this off? Yeah, you can just take your t-shirts off and your trousers, yeah, you can you can take those off as well. You okay. can keep your trousers on. Yeah, but just to keep the t-shirt on. What we, what we need to be clear of, I saw somebody yesterday getting measured here and he'd got a suit on and he was struggling. And I could see that the suit wasn't tight. So I thought, oh, normally then it's the undersuit that's tight. So I took his top half of him and he had a normal dress shirt on underneath his undersuit. Ah. I'm like, oh, that will be. So try and uh, take off as much as possible and put your uh, kangos on. Okay. And then we can get fitting in the suit. Okay. Today's episode is sponsored by Narked at 90. So let's find out a bit more about them. Narked at 90, their tagline has been beyond technical, which describes them pretty well. John Routley and Brent Hudson launched the company over 20 years ago. They are both technical divers who have logged thousands of mixed gas dives between them over a 30-year period. Using their engineering know-how and diving expertise have developed bespoke personal, commercial and military diving equipment and products of a universally recognised unparalleled calibre. Their ability to be adaptive and versatile with their developments led them to support the NHS during covid using their superior knowledge of breathing and oxygen monitoring systems to help develop emergency ventilators. They also design and supply the sneaky stuff used by defence-based development groups throughout the Western world, although they can't tell us much about that. If you're thinking of moving across to tech diving or completely new to diving, Narked at 90 can advise and guide on the best equipment and setup for your personal or commercial requirements. Narked at 90 have unparalleled experience of shearwater dive computers and are the longest serving and sole and UK European service centre for those. They are happy to offer technical support, servicing, repairs and upgrades to all shearwater computers, past and present. Narked at 90 stock shearwater computers, but are also stockers and technical support centre for many other manufacturers, including 
Divesoft, JJCCR, Hollis, Revo and Kiss Rebreathers. Based centrally in the UK, Narct 90 also offer full rebreather head servicing for selected manufacturers. Bespoke cable assemblies. Advice on specific fitting requirements. Suggestions and guidance for home builds. Computer laser cutting and engraving. Pressure testing to simulate 400 metre dives. So, Narct at 90, a reputation built on supporting both manufacturers and divers worldwide. Go to narctat90.com and make sure you are following their social media to keep up to date with their latest news and offers. So, so this is so this uh, is a large. This is an XXL. XXL. What you need is an XXLS, the yeah. short version. Yeah, so the short arm. The, you'll find here that the the chest area is the same, yeah. the shoulder area is the same, yeah. the limbs and the body trunk yeah. is slightly longer on this yeah. than you need. So you yes. need a shorter version. So in the in the with the S at the end, yeah. which is your size, what you'll find is the body trunk will be slightly shorter and the arms and legs will be. Yeah, that makes sense because you know. But you we don't see. have the XL. No, no, it's fair enough. Standard L. And actually, you can see already that the... I mean, this would... These are perfectly plausible undersuit for you, but yeah. in an ideal world, it would be slightly longer. But we know that your arms, uh, compared to the... Uh, measurements, so we can adjust that. So we can also adjust the Good. So... And the important thing to do when you're getting the suit on is to breathe. Yeah, you can feel the heart going. We've got to show we can breathe. Now what we're going to do is, uh, the first thing to do is make sure, before we try and put the top half of the suit on, that the bottom half of the suit is fitted properly. So make sure that you've pulled it up so it's up into your crunch, which it looks like it is. Yep. That's great. Next thing, arm in this side. Once you get to that point, take your thumb loop out. When we, uh, we've got latex uh, seals on this, but when we order your suit, if you wanted uh, silicon uh, this seal, Here's a tip for each guy. What people do when they're trying to put a suit on and off, they make the mistake of leaning forwards. What you do when you lean forwards is you stretch the material even more over the back. So, instead of leaning forwards, I want you to be a turtle. What you're gonna do is you're gonna do this and then lift it over the top and then just stand up. So don't lean forwards. Just squat down, pull it over and then stand up. So you've got a hand But before you do that, it's the first time in a front entry. <laughs> Ready? Right, this is the first time I've done a front entry. Let's do it. <laughs> so It's a girl! It's a girl! <laughs> we had boys. We had a smurf hair going on. I will sort this out for you. What's it got electric? We had boys. Some Freddy Boswell going on. Yeah, we started using these, uh, these garden hoses when we're fitting people in the shops. Yeah. Because anybody who puts a dry suit on for the first time and puts a latex next seal on, when you're then trying to convince them that the thing that's strangling them is going to is going to cost them a lot of money, it's not a good it's not a good sales position to be. So we just put these. We don't recommend them for diving. Right. <laughs> but we put these, just put these loops. Yeah. Just to relieve you a little bit, so you yeah. can come down. Now, two 
two zips. So the first zip from each other will be this side. Yeah, like a balaclava, yeah. which is very useful for you. So you can have it and you <laughs> slide in much easier. Um, okay, so there's a couple of things that we do um, when we're, so maybe I can hold that for you. Yep. The first thing I want you to do is put both of your arms like this. Perfect. Now what we're looking for here is if you just turn around, it should be tight at the back, but it shouldn't be overly stretched. Because if it's overly stretched, remember this is a position you should be in, this is the most this area is going to be stretched with both arms in that position. But if it's too much and you can't do it and it's restricting you from actually getting your arms together, then that's a problem. But in this case, that's perfectly fine. Now I would like you to again do that shutdown position. And we're looking to make sure that this area here is not overly tight again. Because if it is, it's going to stop you from uh, stop you from moving. Okay, good. The next thing I want you to do, maybe if you turn this way, I want you to go down into a lunge position with your front leg at 90 degrees. Okay. Classic. If I come around this side. So again, what we're looking for here is that the front of this suit. The creases are taken out of it, but it's not too tight. So this is absolutely perfect. The, the knee pad should be over the knee, um, and this area should be flat at the front. So there's no need to adjust that suit at all. And when I look, feel underneath, we're looking to get a good handful of material underneath the thigh in this position. If you don't have any material to hold under there, mm. then the suit is going to be restrictive and too tight. But to be perfectly honest, you can tell when somebody gets into this position whether the suit is too tight or not because struggle you to struggle get to get down into that position in the first so place. That material at the back. Yeah, you can see it. Maybe you can see it here where my hand is. I'm just holding a bunch of material at the back. If I can't get that, if it's like this, trying to, then it's way too tight. Yeah. Otherwise, that could be in the wrong position. Well, the, the thigh measurement would be wrong and need to be adjusted. Okay? Yeah, perfect. Stand up. Yeah. Perfect. That is actually a well-fitting suit. And in some cases, you know, if we're adjusting from a chart, it may be that we think, okay, we need to make more adjustments. But mm -hmm. once you get somebody in a suit and you see it, you can feel yeah, it for yourself. And the arms. Well, the one thing is with the arms, if you put your arms right forward, these arms are actually not too bad. It's mm -hmm. better than I thought it was going to be. That's actually... I mean, you could argue that it should be maybe one or two centimeters. You could adjust the arms. But I, I wouldn't necessarily say that you have to in that position. Good. Hands in film. Yeah, it feels lovely actually. Super. First time in, you know, this type of material. Can you run? Yeah. I like it. I like it. That's perfect. Good. Great. We can leave you in yours. Yeah. While we get him into his. Okay, I think I'll be all right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so uh, it was tight, but now that feels much better. Yeah, yeah. super. And you're going to have a near green um, next deal anyway on your suit. And yeah. even for the latex, um, as part of the ordering process, we will try all of the different neck seals yeah. to find the right one for you, and that's what will come on your yeah, suit. Yeah, brilliant, thank you. So it's not one size. Um, it's all. Okay, that's good. Okay. 
Okay. Okay, perfect. So we know that this suit, what we're looking at in this suit is the shoulders because we know that this suit, you need an XXL S. And this is a, a what? An XXL. Right, okay. So you need the short version. So. Yeah. But, but the, the sizes are the same in the chest area and the top area, so it's good to get you in it so we can see it. And I can see that the top half is fine, and this part is fine as well. What's wrong with this suit is the length of the torso. This is too long, and the length of the arms and legs, but we know that. Okay. Because it's the wrong size suit. Yeah, 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 yeah. But I can see from here that the, the body, this area, this area, and the waist area is so these would be uh, these are dry gloves. Yeah, I'll show you those in a second. Okay. These are they're smart seal. Right. Um, and is that standard on suits? On all of the suits. Is it? All yeah. oh, right. That's I'll show you those. We've got a demonstration. Kit. So you look good. I think we should get a photo of you both in your Santa suits. Excellent. And then we can um, then we can go on and look at the the boots and the seals. Yeah. Yeah. Brilliant. over the opposite shoulder. You see how it makes the zip yeah. straight? Yeah. Oh, and it's it easier right to pull out. it up. If you, and then do the same with the dry seal zip. There's the dry seal zip. Now don't pull it yet. If you look at the zip, see how this folds up? Yeah. And it's really difficult to get the zip yeah. undone. So if you look over that shoulder, hold it down, and then just pull straight along the zip line. It's much easier to come in and out of it. Yeah, so, yeah it's mobility. So, <laughs> I've got a question for you on a yes. male point of view. Um, we talked about P zips. Yeah. So, is there really any point if that's really easy to get in or that? It's up to you. Is Everybody's peeing habits are. <laughs> But I'm just thinking, if, if it's a... desperate you want it. No, but, ah, yeah, but I'm just, what I'm thinking is, is that with a, a back opening... Yeah, you have to get zip, unzipped. You've got to get somebody to, to unzip, yeah, you, yeah, yeah, yeah. and then that's all that faff, yeah, you, you know. Yeah. Um, where with this, is a front opening one. I'm just wondering where they still need... I can say that in the, the front zippers are, are probably at least 95% of suits nowadays. Right. And there definitely has been a decline in the ordering of these zips with yeah. the increase in the front zipper market. Yeah. We do maybe one in every 30 suits with a P zip now. We do a lot of people is it, is with it easy to, is it easy to fit P zips because it's all sort of crinkly, isn't it? The thing yeah, is, this is, a, this is something that affects, you know, I suppose that most men and, yeah. and women, but you know, as guys you know, of a certain oh, age, age yeah. uh, you, you get out of the freezing cold water, first thing you want is to go for it. Well, that happens, it's a natural most, thing. I would say half of our suits now come fitted with a P-valve. Yeah. And people okay. are using a P-valve for a guy, and guys and girls, lots of girls are using P-valves as well. Yeah. Um, that is that is a conversation that is. No, uh, but I can get one of my female colleagues to explain fully. But if you're but doing longer dives, I suppose it's not just to be honest. It's a consideration. Some of us have them fitted because maybe we do longer dives or yeah. more technical dives. But then everybody that I know, okay, I say like this: I don't know anybody that has a P valve that doesn't use it on every dive. Yeah. Because. It's so convenient and it's yeah. nice. And if you're in a dive site where the weather's horrific, you don't want to get unzipped. Well, this is it, you know, uh, and you hang up the time, and um, most dive sites, there's hardly any getting out of the weather and whatever, and just raining. The last thing you've got to do is get all your kit out, and then go for a week, sometimes. then come back, then you've got to go the kit in. And, yeah. and, you know, it is, it is something, and especially when you're ordering a suit um, you want to get it as much as possible that perfect thing with all the bits and pieces that you want for only, your convenience. There's only one warning and this is a very serious warning and I, and I failed with this on the first time I used the P-valve. Right. The catheters are glued on the inside. 
basically tea. Yes. So it's like a condom. Right. With uh, with glue on the inside. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> if you don't want to experience, thing think about if you don't want to experience a, a Brazilian wax, <laughs> then you should definitely. Um, Make sure you clear the trees okay. before you use it. Yes, right, I got you. Right, because okay. the end of the dive is quite painful. Yeah, okay. Right. Something to think about. <laughs> it's, a, it's something to think about a lot. But, yes, it is. I mean, it, it, people are doing it and it's evolving and Halcyon have a fantastic bee valve. Yeah. Uh, it's really good. It's really hygienic. You can you have to clean it. You clean the tube. Um, yeah. But it's, it's it, yeah. Just the, the tube goes off out your legs somewhere, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, you connect the tube and it comes, you can have it on your right leg or your left leg, depending. Like, that's, you that's a very personal... But it is, it, you, you know, yeah, it is something that I, I would want in place because at the end of the day, you know, like me and other me, other men, you're going to want to go for a wee. You know? But now you know yeah, that when you're diving and he looks at you and smiles. <laughs> a bit like just, that in the wetsuit. To just put an extra thing kick in. <laughs> Make sure you're not downstream. <laughs> Excellent. Great. Right. Can we get you out? Yeah. Yep. Um, and then uh, once you're out and you're changed, we can come back here and, and start. Okay, let's do that. Yep. Okay. okay. So, Santi Smart Seals. Standard on all Santi and Avatar suits now. Okay. It's a flexible ring, so there's no issues with. Uh, some people find, especially if you've got bigger hands, that they end up with like a 110 hard ring on their system. Yeah. Which some people can find a little bit uncomfortable and get in the way. With the Santi's uh, soft version, it's very flexible because obviously your hand isn't round. Uh, so even with big hands, it's quite easy to get in. You can see that this one is fitted with silicon, so you can fit them with latex or silicon seals, and they're incredibly difficult to change. If you have the dive site and you rip it, you just fold the outer protective layer back and take out. It's, it's so difficult. Oh, wow. It will take you hours. And that's the same. That's the latex this version. This is the silicon one. Silicon. And does, does the same principle work on yeah, the latex? Exactly yeah. the same. If I change this for a latex one, it's a wonderful system. You just change the seal, and then you can pop it back in. You fit it at the bottom. Follow it around. That's changed. Joking aside, uh, and I know it's it's our brand, and we're very proud of it. But it is, without question, the number one. I might have been in the way of the camera for that. Do you want to just do that again? Yep. So to change it at the dive site, you just fold back the outer protective sleeve, yep. and then take out the inner ring. Okay. Take off this one, change it. You can put latex or silicone on, as I said. Put your new seal on that's out of your toolbox. Fold this into a V. Place this ring here, and you'll see the, the big rubber ring. Place that in. That's really simple. Fold the protective like ring that. over. Yeah. And this is a brand new suit, so this isn't a demonstration suit. No, no, no. This is a brand new suit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So no, it, it's unquestionably. It's easy, isn't it? It's brilliant. Yeah. yeah. It's absolutely genius. So, this isn't included in the suit, it's an optional extra. Yeah. You can buy it from any dive center. You can buy the smart glove system, which comes in a little round box, which I will show you shortly. And in that box, you get the rings for the smart glove system. So you get this ring and the O-rings that you need for here, not the gloves. So you can fit any of the gloves onto it. These are the Santa gloves, they're very, very good. Yeah. So you fit the, the glove onto there. And on your suit, you take out that inner ring yeah. and you change it for this inner ring, okay. which is on the same principle. So you're just folding it back, take the ring out, and fit, and fit the smart glove ring, which is super simple. And then you have your seal inside. So now your sleeve is on. So if your glove gets flooded for any reason, you've still got a seal, so you're not exposing the suit. Putting it on, you put your glove in, you hook 
over one side like this. <laughs> How's, um, when you're ready to take it off. I've never used dry gloves, so with your, you know, you know doing, I don't know, sending an SMB up, things like that, something where you want a bit of dexterity. How do you, how does it feel? Because I presume you'd have a, another glove underneath to keep your hands warm. Yep. And then those over the top, these are quite thick. So. Do you lose any dexterity in your fingers? Yeah, and for sure. Your I mean, you lose dexterity, but then you lose dexterity in a, in a wet glove. You do, with a thick but, five mil glove. Well. Yeah, but dexterity is, is two things. First of all, it is the, the actual material that's surrounding it. You lose it because you can't feel. But more importantly, with dexterity, especially in diving, it comes from how cold your hands are. Yes. The colder your hands are, the less dexterity you have anyway. True, yeah. So with a dry glove, they, it's like any diving equipment. They take a bit of getting used to. You love diving in a full face mask. Yeah. I bet you didn't love it the first time you had it on. No, no. <laughs> However, because you're used to diving in a mask and a regulator, so yeah. this is normal to me. Yeah. The same True. with going out of a neoprene suit into a membrane suit. It's, you, there's going to be a period of time where you have to, but then you get used to it. Yeah. And it's and you have to have the right size gloves. I mean, these are way too big for you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you have the right size gloves, and also the same with all of the same with the suits. You can change your thermal protection as the as the temperature changes and the season changes. Yeah. So you can have a summer glove in the summer. You can even have a heated glove. In the, in the winter. Yeah, I've seen Santi offer yeah, a heat, a whole We've got the heat system, system got heat heated gloves. So you can change what you need, and you just get used to it. Yeah. And after a while, you'll find it. Well, I think you're right because I've always, I've never dived with dry gloves, so it's hard to know what they're like. And uh, and I think you can see the benefits, can't you? Yeah, but obviously we struggle to get our gloves on and off when we're waiting to get in the water, don't we? And yeah. something like that where you can just like clip it. You know? Just and the good, it's so much easier. The great thing about this whole system is I'm not a you'll have hardcore divers who I only dive dry gloves all year round even in the summer okay, fine. I don't yeah. I don't I get to a point if it's 15 16 degrees in the water and I'm doing a recreational dive I might not use any gloves at all or I want a thin pair of neoprene gloves yeah but well, it's simple yeah the problem is with a uh, with other brands of, of, of ring systems you're stuck with this clunky Yes, on your suit that's the trouble. The yeah. Time. yeah. But now with this, okay, the winter's coming. I just you take out this one and put this one back in. And now you're, you're back like, to this. Yeah, I like that. It's a really, really smart system. And I mean, and I think you can see the pedigree. That's what it's going for. Yeah, absolutely. And I, and I yeah. think the don't quote me on this, but I think it's somewhere around 80, 85 pounds for the for the smart glove set. Yeah. yeah. Whether you look at the BZ400 or the dry suits or all of the facets of real dive of, of Santi, there's a there is continuity in one thing, the development of the products. And when they come out with the product, they've been in this was in development for a long time because Tom the owner, it wasn't right, it wasn't right, then it's right. But we know when he brings a product out, Santi brings a product out, yeah. it's gonna be the best on the market. Yes. Yeah. And you can't get this on another suit. No. This isn't an open source suit. If somebody wants to, if one of our warranty centers want to buy this part to fit to the suit, they have to give us the suit because it's only available on Santa suit. And it's a... Yeah, it's a good system. We're very, very proud of it. Yeah, yeah, it's good a system. Very, and it's a big product to put out. So, this is my waffle. Seals will try on. Amazing. We don't need to try the, the or do you want the silicon? Because you can have it supplied with silicon. Silicon reset. What are their pros and cons? It's a good question actually, Jam. <laughs> well done. I mean, I I have silicon on my suit. 
rooms in a, a small and a in a small and large. So there's only two sizes. There's no give, is there? There's a lot of give in there. Silicon is very stretchy. Is the more give I in that? I would say that the, 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 the latex seal is probably harder wearing. It's easier for you to put your nail through one of these. Mm. But then you also, you can change it. So you can have them in a box. Some people are, these are much harder wearing, I would say, definitely. Some people will, some people are actually allergic to latex. That's, that's relatively common. Um, so then they would go for a silicon, but quite a lot of people are having the silicon seals fitted. I have the silicon seals. Are they more flexible, They've, you know, in terms of co the configuration of like moving your wrists compared to the alternative? Yeah, I would say, yeah, that, yeah, I would say that it's probably a little bit more. I mean, yeah. again, it's people who are used to diving in latex don't think about it. Yes, I think so. Good. As you're having a, if you were having a latex neck seal, we would now test all the next seal, the next seals. All our dealers have all of the sizes, so it would be ordered with the right one. But because you're having a near print, we don't need to do that. Um, ah, there is one difference as well. You can only use silicon if you've got a ring system. You can't glue silicon to a suit. Mm -hmm. So that's why you can only have it in the neck if you have a ring that fits on the neck. Sorry, guys, I should have put it in the hand. And now we can have a fun part. You can have a name patch on your suit and decide what you want. You can have it on one side or both sides. I, I say big scuba on one side and Gemma Kemp on the other side. Super. So now what I'm going to get you to do, and I get all of the dealers to do this, you write what you want in block capitals. Yeah. I will not be responsible for the... Can I put my tea order on? White, two sugars? <laughs> yeah, you, you wouldn't be the first. That's on my SMB. In fact, you interviewed Dean um, before, Dean Martin. Yes. His yeah. Santa suit's just arrived. Do you know oh, what wow. it says on his? No. Killer Queen. Killer Queen, nice one. I thought he would have This Is The Way. I think it's pretty, uh, pretty accepted that he was going to have whatever I wanted him to have on it. <laughs> yeah. Okay, Ian, if you can write here in block capitals what you want on your right and left. What, Gemma? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'll just change Jean's colour to pink or something Wait. while we're doing it. <laughs> Super. And the last thing we need to do is the boots. So. It's a nice touch having the embroidery on the side. We have the different sizes of boots here. Um, and we have, uh, these are the Santi Flexol. It doesn't really matter what's written on the back because, again, this is very subjective. We have people who um, wear different thermal protection on their feet when they dive. So in an ideal world, what we say to the dealers is you should get your customers to come in with what they dive in on their feet. Right. So you can try the boots on. So forget about what the size says on the back. Um, just try the boots on and tell me which one feels comfortable for you. Okay. I've got really thin socks on, actually. Yeah, so we would probably, maybe what we should do with the boots, just for this, is you guys can go into Crystal Seas and try the boots on there. Yeah. Because they've got all of the boots and you can take your socks in. Okay. So we can make sure, but normally you would just try these on. Yeah, okay. Um, and get them right. Does Sandy do socks? Yeah, they do. Uh, okay. Yeah, we do a, a really good, Right, okay. Right, okay. So we'll get those from Okay. And that is, uh, <coughs> that's that. Brilliant. We're ready to go. The suits take between uh, eight to ten weeks to come. Uh, it depends.
depends on how busy we are with orders. Okay. Um, sometimes they can be as quick as six weeks, but normally eight to ten weeks. And as a customer, would I need to pay a deposit? That depends on the dealer. Right, okay. Most, and, and, and your relationship with the dealer. Some dealers ask for the full suit price up front. Some people, some dealers ask for just a deposit down onto the suit. But that depends on the dealer. And what about uh, when the suit arrives, if there's any s slight adjustment needed? So if there's any issues when the suit comes, the first port of call is to go back to the dealer and the dealer will communicate with the service department and the warranty department. Okay. We have a full warranty centre in Nottingham. Um, so any adjustments or any problems with the suits when they arrive, they go straight back down. We have around about a five day turnaround time. Yeah. If the suit needs to be ad adjusted structurally, so from a sewing point of view, it very rarely happens because our dealers are fantastic. Yeah, uh, and you've um, been, you know, the whole measurement is, go, you know, you've been through everything, um, you know, and I'm pretty sure, but sometimes, you know, the odd tweak or sure. something like for that. Sure. Yeah. And you know, uh, uh, we have a, 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 an extremely high success rate with the suits. Yeah. So that means that if on the odd occasion we get a suit that turns up that's wrong, and it doesn't quite fit the, 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 the need of the diver and the expectation of the diver, we will, we will get yeah. it right. Okay. Um, and there's a many ways to, for us to do that. But if, if the suit doesn't fit, normally we get them to put it on and we take photos of it. That goes, if that's a big discussion in between our service department and Santi and we work out what to do for the best. Yeah. Um, but if it's a problem with a, a zipper or a problem with boots or a problem with the, 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 that type of stuff, then it's all done in-house. In right, the, okay, uh, okay. And when the suit arrives, how what's in the box when it arrives? So in the bag, you get a, a really good bag. Uh, it's like a, I should I should grab one. So you get a really good uh, heavy duty bag uh, to get to fit your uh, suit in. Inside there, you get your hose, you get your hood, you get a, like a, a goodie bag from uh, from Santi with some bits in. Um, you get some towels, you get some um, uh, lube for the, for the zip, and then the instruction book for the suit. Well. Um, and warranty? What about servicing? Yeah, so warranty is there is a, the Santi Saver Club. So first of all, it comes two years anyway on the suit when it comes to the construction of the suit. So we wouldn't need service for two years? No, well, that's, a, that's a different thing. Oh. So the, the, the seams, as I discussed with you in the previous podcast, that uh, because of the, how the seams are constructed with the cold brewing process, um, you already get two years on the workmanship of the suit. However, if you join the Santa State Dry Club, the workmanship of the seams, and that is all covered under a five-year guarantee. Wow. The consumables of the suit, the seals, the zippers, the boots, they have different variants. So for example, as I said before, a plastic zipper has a two years warranty, a metal zipper has one year warranty, yeah. the flex holes, I'm crossing my fingers because if I'm wrong, I think it's one year on the flex holes, but yeah. even the seal, even your latex seal has a six month warranty. Yeah. So if you dive in and on the, you know, in month five, you it splits for some reason or you put your fingers through it, it goes back to yeah. When it comes to general maintenance of the suit, it depends how much you use the suit. But if you're using the suit on a regular basis, then there's a warranty, your local dive center, your local warranty center can do a pressure test of the suit and make sure that there's no issues. Yeah. Um, keep an eye on it to make sure that you keep, the, the key thing for suits is keeping them dry. And not dry, oh that visually looks dry, really dry. Yeah. Inside the suit is a problem and actually, the biggest problem is in kind of August time because the suit, the humidity is so high yeah. that the inside of the suit doesn't dry properly. Okay. It doesn't dry thoroughly. You can actually, from the from all of the Santa dealers, they actually have um, a product that they can sell, which we sell a lot of these uh, uh, drying hangers. So it's a hanger that you plug in, which has got a battery that can really dry the suit in, in minutes, but it really truly dries it out. One of the biggest dangers for a suit um, is mold. Because mold gets into the suit, it gets under the stitching, it gets under the more so for the um, heat transfer type suits, the, the 
which most people are using the heat transfer tape as we discussed is more problematic for that but, but for all suits you should keep them as dry as possible. So for generally what is the best way to store your suit when you're not using it when you've dried it fully do you pop it back in the bag or no, have it hung, hung up? Hung up. Yeah, yeah. Ideally a hung up um, with the zipper closed yeah. um, hung up. No, that's good to know. So you can do all the right things to maintain the Absolutely. life of the suit. Absolutely, and you get all of this advice from your dealers, but also on Santi, uh, There's really good videos about maintenance. Great. Yeah. No, that's been yeah. a really smooth process. Yeah. Excellent. And you didn't die of heat. <laughs> thank you. We all say thank you very much. It's no been problem. an awesome process and uh, really smooth. And um, yeah, you know, look forward to seeing the the finished suit. It'd be brilliant. Good job, Big Scuba Podcast. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> Welcome to the Big Scuba Podcast. We are here at our local dive centre, Crystal Seas Scuba, and they are our Santi dealer as well. So we've come to complete the process of getting fitted for our dry suits. Dry suits are done, so we just need to look at our hood sizes, gloves and boots. And I'm here with Polly, the Crystal Sea Scuba owner. And uh, how are you, Polly? Yeah, great, thank you. Good. Thanks for coming down today. Right. Yeah, it's lovely to see you both. Um, and yes, we're, we're Santi dealer. We have been for a couple of years now. And Santi suits are very popular. Mm. Um, yeah, we've had lots of people coming and getting Santis, so it's nice to get you set up in them as well. So you can go through the full measurements yeah. of anyone that yeah. comes and in. Yeah, and all the three of us that work here are all trained by Santi in Great. the Santi measurement process. And you dive in a Santi suit? Yes, I have a Santi myself and Excellent. I love it. Yeah, yeah, really nice, really warm, really flexible, very comfortable. So yeah, yeah. I love it. Great. Oh, awesome. Yep. All right, well, let's get measured up. Yep, let's do it. Excellent. Okay, so let's so try some boots, boots on then. Brilliant. So, right. what size feet do you have, Ian? Um, I am a 10. Okay, so you're a 10. And Gemma? Six and a half. Yeah. Okay, right. First of all, we need to make sure you've got socks on that you'll yep. be wearing under your dry suit boots. <laughs> yeah, these are my Because dry generally, suits. we wear slightly thicker socks when we go diving than yeah. we would um, just obviously normal yeah. what they wear. Because here, certainly here in the UK, we're diving in cold water. So yeah. we want nice, thick, warm socks yep. to keep our feet nice and warm. So have you got, yeah, you've got yeah, the socks that you would wear, yeah. same as you, Ian. Yeah, yeah. yeah. got them on. Brilliant. So I've got a couple of pairs for you to try, Ian. So we've got a full range of sizes here, everything from small up to triple extra large. Brilliant. How many sizes of boots are in the range? Oh, um, everything from extra small up to triple extra large, wow. going up every way. Yeah. Okay. So there's the medium and there's the large. Okay. So just pop them on okay. and then when you put them on, do stand up because when you stand up your, your feet go forward a little bit more. Yeah. And you know, like, like you used to do as a kid in the shoe shop, do have a little walk around to check they feel comfortable. <laughs> But the boots are great, they're nice and light. Yeah, they definitely feel and too you've got tight. And a really yeah. nice um, adjuster there. Tight, so you can stop the air migrating down. So you can try those. So yeah, the medium is too tight. Yes, yeah. 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 Again, it probably would have been fine in regular socks, but because you need those thick socks. Yeah, that's much better. They're quite slim, aren't they? It's, they are. They're yeah. nice and light. They're yeah. not too buoyant. You know, they're not big, thick, buoyant That'd boots, be... which is really nice. They're nice and flexible, aren't they? They are. Yeah. They're, they're really comfortable boots yeah. um, to walk around in yeah. um, and to dive nice in. Yeah, very, very, very soft, yeah, really soft, really light. Yeah, so myself and Chris and George have all been to Sweden uh, to the real diving base oh. um, where Jamie and Johan and yeah, the team are. Yes, Excellent. yeah, yeah, it was incredible. Jamie did mention that, there. you know, they, they di they'll dive with it. Dealer, yeah. dealership and yeah that. so yeah. it's great this um, we went out there for a couple of days uh got fully trained on all the halcyon all the sanity equipment mm. nice. all the measuring process uh it's incredible and we went diving yeah that's a great so. way of introducing new dealers to the whole network of sanity yeah. and real yeah diving. it was really nice it was a really good experience mm. so they gave us all the training got us fitted out and then we actually get, got to go diving in the Santi dry suits and the Halcyon wings. Yeah, wow. Um, awesome. Chris and George went off the coast, um, off Sweden, and then Trudy and I were over, and they took us diving in some old disused mines. Oh, wow, in that, the middle of good. Sweden, which was incredible. <laughs> yeah, <I bet> was <laughs> Absolutely brilliant. incredible. About five degree water, so yeah. the dry suits and the, and the lovely base layers were... <laughs> Kept you warm. Yeah, yeah. yeah, and they really did. We were toasty. Yeah. Absolutely toasty, yeah. Not, not cold at all. Yeah. So the training, did that take a day? 
was it? Uh, yes, yeah, it's yeah. a full full day of training. Yeah, and that's then the good. The second day was the fun day to go right. diving. Yeah. <laughs> well, at least when you've got that kind of relationship with Santi, it's very close, and then you know you can see exactly what they're doing as well and bring yeah. it back here. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, to see the passion that that they have mm. and the work they put into everything was yeah to see it firsthand. Was, yeah, was brilliant. Yeah, and that comes across when we saw them at the show, yeah, didn't yeah. it? Yeah. Brilliant. So gloves. So Santi have um, a smart system. So when your dry suit arrives, it tends to arrive just with the wrist seals okay. and the latex wrist seals here. Right. So you could wear it just like that, mm. um, just with no gloves or with wetsuit gloves. But most people add on the smart seals. Um, so you adapt it. You take the lower half of this off. And you then fit the ring system. Okay. And you then plug the dry gloves into it. Right. So as as with lots of dry suits nowadays, the dry gloves are really popular. Yeah. Dry gloves are yeah. fantastic. They keep your hands dry. You can wear all different um, levels of thermal insulation glove underneath, depending on the water temperature. Um, and they just plug in. They're really simple, really easy to fit in. Mm. Um, so they keep your hands dry and warm when you're diving in cooler okay. waters, which is fantastic. Um, and you have the option. You can either keep the original latex seal and then plug the dry gloves gloves in over the top, right. which has the advantage. It means that you could still wear it with no gloves or with wetsuit gloves. Yeah. Um, and it also does mean if you were to puncture a glove, you're not going to flood your suit. Yeah. Yeah. Um, some people just I like that go, go without and just have it like that and just plug directly in. Mm -hmm. right. But you then have to wear the dry gloves with it. You can't wear it without the dry gloves. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So my, oh, this is my suit here. So this is my lovely Elite Plus suit, which I love. Um, I, I had the latex seals as well, because I wanted the option mm. yeah, to wear wetsuit gloves. Um, and also just have that security that if it, if it did get punctured, um, but it's not going to flood the whole suit. Yeah, yeah. and neither yeah. of us have dived in dry gloves, no. have we? So no. it's going to be a new experience. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Them. They're, they're great. They're warm, really comfortable and um, much more dexterity mm. than with thick wetsuit gloves because yeah. they're, they're quite slim and so no really struggling easy. to get them on or off <laughs> much easier to get on yeah, yeah. yeah. much easier to get on than wetsuit gloves oh, yeah. so yeah really popular and again we, we just fit these for people so when, when people order the suits when a suit comes in we just adapt the suit to, to their um, specification okay great nice yeah. one. so and then there is also the option if you're diving in very cold water you can even get heated gloves oh, wow. so these are amazing so yeah, if you are diving in colder waters um, and you don't want to get cold hands, you can even get the heated so gloves. So you need the full heated system? Yes. So you've got your heated okay. gloves and they connect in. There's an external connector there. Right. Okay. And you okay. have a battery pack, uh, which we have here actually. So oh. nice wow. bit of kit. Where so where does that, does that, that <laughs> where does that sit? <laughs> that mounts on the outside on your halcyon harness or webbing harness. Yeah, so you can attach it to a harness. Mm. Okay, so, um, so you can have it attached to a harness. To tank. Yeah, and then okay. you can plug in um, the full heated vest system as well. Wow. So you can get so a full heated Do we heated need to allow, system. if we went for something like this, would we need to allow for this the, in the, the measurements of our suit? The suit sizing allows for uh, the thickest undersuit, so mm -hmm. the BZ400. Okay. Um, and this isn't terribly bulky underneath, actually. This is about the same thickness as what you would wear under a BZ400 anyway. Um, just like that, a fairly thin thermal yeah. layer yeah. underneath it. And then you've got to allow for your weight in the cordon as well. Yes, yeah, exactly. So hoods. So hoods. So because the, they are designed for cold water diving, we have some lovely 7mm hoods for you here to try on. Yeah. Keep your heads nice and toasty. Yeah. So the sizes are written on the back. Uh, and we've got a couple of hoods behind you there, Gemma. I'll go for that side. So we've think. got. I'll go for. So we've got a medium. A uh, few to try, Gemma. And then here we've got. Small. There's an extra large, a double extra large, a triple right. extra large. I'll go for the triple. What do you wear? Hood white. Oh, you don't. Want... Uh, I think I wear a large. Large. Yeah, I think a medium would be to choose. Let's try next. So yeah, so they are they are a wiggle to get on, but they're nice and smooth. They should just slide on. <laughs> And like any hood, they want to feel, <laughs> want to feel snug. Yeah, trying on hoods is never, <laughs> never glamorous, Gemma, <laughs> with the hair. <laughs> Brilliant. And then scoot all your hair so it's tucked inside. Yeah, so it wants to feel secure. It doesn't want to feel too tight. It doesn't want yeah. to feel Mine feels too tight. Oh, so we can go up a size. Yeah. How does yours feel, Ian? Okay. Yeah, excellent. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it looks great. <laughs> <laughs> 
Okay. Perfect. <laughs> right, you ready? Yeah. <laughs> well, you can take them off now. <laughs> Ooh, oh my god. Amazing. So you can see why it's really important <sighs> that you come into your Asante dealer. Yeah, and really these important. And these sizing because yeah. you've been surprised at the sizes that you needed. can't guess. Yeah. No. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you'd never want to guess. So. Yeah, you know, extra large hood for Gemma, Gemma triple extra large for Ian. It's yeah. really important that you try them on and, and you try on a few different sizes and get yeah. really comfortable. Yeah. Let's go. Brilliant. Brilliant. Thank Lovely. you very much, Polly. You're very welcome. Thank you. Thanks for going through, through that with us. Yeah. No, that's been really interesting to, yeah, and finalise all the measurements. Yeah. And mess my hair up. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I've lost some hair probably. <laughs> Woo. If you've got any questions, speak to your local Santi dealer or go to santi.com. Excellent. And we should also say thank you to Chris and Polly for letting us film in Crystal Sea Scuba in Norwich today. You're very welcome. Always a pleasure to see you guys and thank, thank you for coming in and taking the time. Excellent. Yeah, great um, experience. Welcome back. Um, we hope you found that uh, informative and, um, you know, it's a uh, thorough process it is yes know. yeah and head over to the sandy there's, there's a lot of thought going to you know even like you know because one of the things jamie did was check your, your arm measurements mm. when you put your arm behind you um to make sure you know you can do you, you've got flexible suit that doesn't hinder you doing uh, shutdowns yep. if you use a twin set so yes so it was a, a thorough process it was yeah, yeah, yeah. it was good so uh, I uh, hope, hope you found that good. And uh, like I say, if you need further information, uh, either speak to your local Santi dealer, uh, hopefully your local uh, dive centre. Yeah, if you want to find out your nearest Santi dealer, you can go to the Santi website and there's a yeah. section on there where you can find your ne nearest dealer worldwide. Yeah, or you know, go on to the Santi website uh, and make contact that way. And I'm pretty sure they'll... They'll soon come back to you with some further information. If you've got questions, you can contact us as well. Um, all our contact details are on the show notes. And uh, you can contact us via our website, which is thebigscuba.com. And, uh, you know, we will come back to you with some whatever information you need. Yeah, and if you're a Santi suit wearer, tell us all about it. Yeah, um, certainly seeing more of them about on the, in, you know, on the dive centre. So... Uh, on the uh, you know uh, whether it be at Stony, mm. Raysbury, Robster, wherever you know you do see them about now. Too. Yeah, and they look smart. They do, and they're quite. Uh, you can coordinate them with different colours as well. So it, what, black. What well, I know, <laughs> black. Black and then black. <laughs> but we have got friends at our local dive centre that have got orange. <laughs> Bright orange, yeah, yeah, yeah like uh, they like the high vis. Yeah, so the, there's a bit of custom customability you yeah. can. Make them... Just about all my stuff is black. Fins are black. Stealth. Why? Well, exactly. You know, yeah. Black ops. Stealth. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Why <What I> advertise? <laughs> but anyway, as you, you Roger can. Moore used to say. <laughs> yes, you can make the suits as uh, adaptable to you, really. Can you? you can. Yeah. You yeah. can. Yeah. Anyway. Any colour you like, the ones coming black. <laughs> but other colours are out there. As Henry so. Ford once said. Really? Yeah. Okay. You can have whatever colour you have. If you want your Model T Ford, you can have whatever uh, whatever colour you like, as long as it's black. Okay. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so I hope that was... Oh. That was that was it. So uh, apart from that, I just want to say uh, this episode was also dedicated to uh, my, my new friend, Angela Norton, over at Scuba Travel, who <laughs> stood us up twice. Stood us up twice this week, so uh, without any contact. Wow, well. that was rude, wasn't it? Well, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Very rude, actually. Okay. I hope she's listening. Anyway. Moving on. Yeah. So thanks, thanks for listening. Thanks for downloading. And we'll see you soon at the dive site yes and thank you to not 90 for sponsoring this podcast episode absolutely that was the big scuba podcast <laughs> now that does wrap up today's episode of the big scuba podcast but if you want to hear more from the podcast make sure you hit that subscribe or follow button depending on what platform you are listening on that way you will never miss an episode from us but if you are listening on Apple Podcasts and did enjoy what you heard today, we would really appreciate it 
if you head to the show page to leave a five star rating and review. It really does help us. If you do, please take a screenshot of that review and send it to us on Instagram and we'll give you a shout out to say a big thank you. If you have any questions for us or anything that has been mentioned in today's episode, be sure to reach out to us on any of our social media platforms or send us an email. The links are in the show notes. We will get back to you no matter what. If you have made it to this point in the episode, we both want to say a big, big thank you for tuning in and we'll see you on the next episode.